Today I'm walking around with a six stop filter on in broad daylight. That can mean one of two things. Either I'm trying to slow the shutter down or I'm trying to slow the shutter down. The question is why? Well, today I'm gonna to be talking about ICM and particularly I'm talking about movement, how you move, where you move, how fast you move, um, and all of these kind of things. And they all affect the outcome of your image. Oh, I imagine you would expect that to happen. But until you experiment with these movements and how you move and all the, 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 the intricacies of movement, uh, you don't necessarily get it. And even if you do it, you don't necessarily get it because there are all kinds of things you need to get up here uh, that allows you to kind of compute what's going on. So I hope this video will be just that little bit of help that will kind of push you a little bit further on and uh, give you some ideas. It's quite a grey day today and I thought one of the places that I might get some decent images uh, on a day like today is down at the seaside. Selecting a subject for your ICM uh, is as complicated and as diverse as selecting a subject for any photograph. But one of the things you bear in mind, one of the, the, the things that really works is something that's got a reasonably high contrast or something that's got a, a, a decent shape that you can begin to replicate. And of course, it does depend on uh, the kind of image you're after. You know, if you're just after a kind of, yeah, flat sea and horizon, then, you know, perfect place to do it. And if you're just trying to get streaks of colour, great. If you're trying to get something that's got some meaning to it or some semblance of, um, yeah, uh, they convey the idea of what it is you're shooting, uh, then opting for something that's got a very distinctive shape or something that kind of juts out and provides uh, a big area of contrast will work well. And it's exactly what we've got down here. So I've decided to shoot this stack of rocks going into the, uh, the sea here uh, and these actors, um, yeah, sea defences to keep the beach in place in effect. And the great thing about them is they've got a really good structure. There's detail in the rocks themselves. There's lots of colour in the rocks. There's lots of variation. So you can see just down here, there's quite a lot of green algae and such. Uh, immediately in front of me down uh, the, uh, off the edge here, there were some much lighter rocks. So we can shoot something that could be recognisable, but has definitely got some detail and texture and structure within it. Uh, which gives us a lot of opportunity uh, for movement variation. One of the things that you'll need to bear in mind when doing ICM is that the longer we linger in a particular position, the more the data from that position is gathered by the sensor and therefore the stronger that particular part is going to be. Therefore we can control in a single ICM image the level of data and detail that we're collecting about any given point. I'm not going to pretend it's easy though. So if you keep an eye on the camera here, uh, I've got it zoomed out at its widest here. Let's do it for a second to see what happens. So we're pointing down, linger up. And it's because we're working with yeah, seconds and therefore fractions of a second, getting timing right is, well, it's a bit like playing a computer game where you're trying to, yeah, time jumping over something and avoiding something else and all of these things it's uh, it, it is just practice and uh, let's just try this again second up and you'll see from these three shots here I'll separate that so I know what I'm doing uh, with um, a, a hand in front of the lens you'll see from those few shots there just how different things can be so if I just do one straight up let's do another one just keep movement on there just see how different that is by lingering we're collecting more information about the particular thing that camera is looking at at that time and it can have quite an effect on the image I didn't get a satisfactory image out of uh, the place I was standing. I thought it was okay, but on reflection it wasn't. But I did get this later. I didn't film this because I didn't think this was going to work, but it did. It looks very much like a double exposure, but it's not. Let's call it a double linger. It's where basically I start pointing the camera and lingering at this, and then whip pan up to the boat, lingering there until the shutter closes. 
something else you need to bear in mind when uh, doing ICM uh, and particularly uh, in things like this where you've got lights and darks um, at, at close quarters that is I mean obviously there are lights and darks everywhere what I'm getting at is the camera can't record dark over light if you're moving the camera over a dark section and it's already recorded a light section it's not going to record the light section that it's already got as dark suddenly it just, basically it can't record darkness if it's already got light it can't record dark over it it might get yeah the shadow of movement it might get some edge detail movement but it will not replace light with dark and understanding that may well determine how you start and stop a movement, where you start a movement, whether you start up in the light section or do you start down in the dark section, uh, Yeah, if you're working with a horizon or something like this. Basically the scene in front of you, the scene that you're trying to capture, will begin to determine where you start your camera movement and where you end your camera movement. So don't basically go thinking that yeah, you can travel from left or right or right to left and it won't make any difference. Because even if you can repeat exactly the same movement, if what's over here is dark and what's over here is light, it will make a difference. We interrupt this broadcast because I think I made a bit of a pig's ear in explaining this uh, can't capture black after white business. I'm not sure I'm going to do a better job now. The point is very much that the camera is only recording light it's not recording dark, or more specifically, it's not recording black. Black is the absence of light. So if you've already captured light, what you can't do is capture black on top of light, if you see what I mean. Because you're never capturing 100% light, i.e. absolutely pure white, you can get a semblance of movement over a, a lighter area uh, later on. You're much better in recording the darker areas before you get the lighter area. It's also important when you're considering your exposure uh, in that if you're using one of the automatic modes of the camera, I do recommend you use manual, but if you're using one of the automatic modes of the camera, if you point the camera at a light patch and then move to a dark patch, the exposure is going to be off. You're much better starting off in the darker area because if you expose to the darker area, you'll get the detail. Anyway, what do you think of the room? Uh, it's nice, isn't it? This is a Garth Cottage. It's one of the holiday cottages that we have. And I've come over here today and I've done a bit of filming. I'll show you around in a second. The cottage is great. It's a 16th century fisherman's cottage. Very much a two up, two down. Original footprint of the building is basically this room. Uh, we believe that back door might even be original. It does have original flooring. Uh, in here and when I say original flooring it's brick and the wear pattern is amazing if you'd like to come and stay here as a holiday or if you'd like to come on a residential photographic workshop in Norfolk this is one of the places that you could stay in and as I say beach literally 200 yards that way anyway back to Andy on the Sheringham seafront I mentioned before the kind of uh, movement that you might want to uh, follow when doing uh, ICM, following the natural shape of a subject. So, yeah, if you're trying to ICM uh, a human figure, you probably want to go up, down rather than left, right. Here I've got a diagonal to work with. It's quite interesting. <clears throat> and what's really interesting about it is the colours and the shapes because there's a mural painted on the wall and the handrail and everything else makes it rather interesting. I like abstract images and I just like the subtle kind of pastely tones of these. I realise it's not for everybody but I could look into these for quite some time. What are your thoughts on them? Selecting your subjects in the first place is always a difficult thing, isn't it? ICM subjects can be different from uh, standard subjects or non-ICM subjects, but, you know, um, often many of the same rules apply. I think this here will work quite well. I've done a couple of test shots and it's not a bad thing to be photographing. With any luck, there'll be something in the shots that have got the people walking up the steps, just to provide that little bit more colour. But 
what's grabbed this for me is again it's the contrast it's this magnolia cream color uh, and indeed the shape the fact that the windows are, are not, don't think they've got any glass or perspex in them but again it's the contrast there of the window frames in what once would have been white the blue of the shutter there the shape of it the fact we've got a set of stairs leading up here all of these things make it an interesting subject um, on its own without you know just as a straight shot it's not a bad subject because we've got some leading lines running off and whatever you know it's not a bad thing but to get a little bit more movement in them in it a little bit more dynamism dynamism uh, i think works relatively well and just a little bit of movement not yeah not quite big sweeping movement just enough to get that uh, that dynamic in it Here's a movement to get you thinking. If I wanted to get this beach hut centered in my shot and I wanted to do a kind of sweep across them to create some dynamic movement, there's only one way of really guaranteeing it. You start in the center, you move over there, you move over there. And if you've got time on your shutter, you go back to the middle. Create something like this. It may also be worth doing that on the tripod and panning around so you manage to keep a level because there's lots of flat things in this. So I came over to these more colorful ones as well and tried a similar but slightly different technique which if it's worked out, I'll explain when you see the image. So this is four images blended together in Photoshop. There are two focused more on the center blue one and then one sweep into the left and one sweep into the right. Doing it this way enables me to make sure I get things as accurate as I possibly can whilst maintaining movement. It's just another technique you might want to try. If you want some other ideas for ICM photography, go watch uh, that video up there. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. These glasses are falling off. <laughs>